Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. I've been a little under the weather, but didn't want too many days to go by without being with you guys. I have a tendency to like the meditative process of alcohol inks when I'm not at my strongest, so let's play with inks today. I've pulled out three Kielty inks. I'm becoming more and more partial to these inks because of their non-toxic nature and they are incredibly low in odor. Usually when I blow inks around and I use alcohol or blending solution, I am knocked over by the odors. This is not the case when I use Guilty. So I'm super grateful for that, especially since asthma's kicking up. <laughs> I've pulled out brown, red, and dark olive. No particular reason, just because it seemed very earthy to me, so I want to see what we get with that. While chatting with a friend recently, I mentioned to her that I wish my blow dryer was as easy to maneuver as my mini heat gun, and she told me about her hot air curling iron, which I had never heard of. A few days later, an awesome viewer sent me one, and I have been loving it. Thank you very, very much, Darcy. I think this is fabulous. So, for those of you who might be like me and not familiar with these, this comes with attachments like brushes to curl your hair. But it blows out air, and this particular one has two settings a very low blowing and low heat setting, and a higher blowing and higher heat setting. Now, neither setting blows as much air as a blow dryer does, but that's actually one of the things I love most about it, because very often with alcohol ink, I would prefer a softer current of air. So this is just perfect. I will make sure to put a link for it in the description box if you want to check one out for yourself. I'll just turn it on so that you can hear the settings. So this is the low. Pretty low and very, you know, and then I can keep my hand right here without feeling like tremendous heat. And then the higher setting. It's hot, yeah. It, it gets pretty hot. And it's super duper light. And what I also love is that the cord swivels. So I don't have to worry about it getting twisted up. So anyway, if you're interested, I will make sure to put a link for this in the description box because you might want to check one out for yourself. Okay, let's see if we can make something pretty. My substrate today will be the back of a sheet of Kirkland photo paper. If you're new to my channel and not familiar with using photo paper, it's not any brand that works. You need a brand that has a plastic coating on the back because that's what will work for alcohol ink. The front side, the part that's used in your printer, the shiny side, doesn't work. The ink just seeps right into it. But if it's got a plastic coating on the back like Kirkland photo paper does, it's really good as a uh, Yupo alternative. I will be using 99% alcohol with this, but 91 would work just fine. I'm starting out by wetting my paper with a bit of alcohol to help the ink move around and to thin it a bit too. I picture the red as the main color for this piece, so I'm using it first. Just a couple of drops, and I'm using the air on the low setting. Since I don't have a plan just yet, I'm just filling the center in a bit and trying to keep the outer edges a little lighter. I'm introducing a bit of brown now. One of the things I love about alcohol inks is how easily they'll blend into each other. I don't have to work that hard to get a nice transition between colors. And now when I add some green, 
it blends in perfectly too. I'm stopping for a minute just to take stock and kind of get a feel for where I want to take this. I am loving the color combination. I think I'm going to pull out like a yellowish, goldish color for this area. I think I'll add that too. Hey, yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, I've pulled out uh, ochre, which is a color I've not used before in this line, so I'm a little excited to see what it's like. And I think it should complement what's going on here pretty nicely. As before with the other colors, I'm trying to keep the ochre lighter on the periphery and I'm also working to give it a little bit of interest. With that done, I work to soften the edges along the left side. After looking at this for a bit, I decide I want to increase the red. I think it got swallowed up by the other colors. I also want to fill in that small white gap. I don't need to add more ink. I just need to reactivate what's already down on the surface. At this point, I get an idea. I want to see if I can get this to look like some sort of garden image. The colors suggest that to me. So I try to create a couple of simple shapes for now, just to see what could happen. First, I try two. Then I wonder if a third might be a good idea. And then I see the green shape at the top. It's such a perfect leaf. This is when I decide to see if I can get this to look like roses. Now stay until the end because this piece goes through a few changes. <laughs> now I could have pulled out a brush and made roses in a more controlled way, but oh no. <laughs> I wanted to play with my new toy and challenge myself. Challenges are good. They do teach you a lot. If you don't rip up the whole thing in utter frustration. <laughs> More on that later. But hey, I got the right blob to look pretty gosh darn rose-like. I was kind of thrilled and encouraged. Now, I thought about protecting the rose because I liked it so much, but I was cocky and I proceeded. I squirted some alcohol over on the left to try to make another rose because I was thinking I was all that and a few bags of chips <laughs> in the rose making department. And sure enough, I accidentally squirted a few drops of alcohol Onto my perfect little rose. <sighs> Once I saw that, I stopped. I admitted I was cocky. <laughs> and I took out my layering solution. <laughs> now, if this is your first time seeing a video of mine using Kielty inks, this solution can be painted over any dry alcohol ink and it protects that ink from other alcohol inks or blending solution or alcohol, meaning none of those things can reactivate dry ink protected by this layering solution. So if I put it on earlier, the squirting alcohol drops wouldn't have affected the rose one bit. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> hindsight. 2020, you know. <laughs> Here you see it drying. Once the solution dries, you cannot even see that it's there. It pretty much vanishes, but it does its job. I don't know how. It's just like magic to me. 
While we wait for this to dry, take a second to subscribe. Hit the bell to know about new videos and give a thumbs up if you're enjoying this. With that rose all dry and safe from mishaps, <laughs> let's tackle the rose on the left. Now that I am using the layering solution, it's really, really important that I only use 99% alcohol going forward. 91% or less will eat through the solution and let whatever you protected get reactivated and bleed or bloom, almost like you didn't even use the layering solution. So only 99% works or blending solution. Now, my goal with this rose is to give it more defined petals, if possible. I'm crossing my fingers. I can get that to happen. And I get lucky. The really awesome thing about this blower is it's low setting. It really helps me get softer shapes in a more controlled, the ink doesn't run away from you kind of way. So I really, really like that. Now I'm super happy with this rose, so time to protect it. <laughs> a few drops of layering solution. And I can safely try to figure something out for the bottom. And um, this, th this is going to be when uh, this kind of gets a little crazy. I could have stopped here and just gone back to bed to rest. Oh, but oh no, <laughs> that would have been sane. We can't do that. Not when there's more ink and a working blower in my hand. So <laughs> I tried and tried and tried again. I didn't like anything I was making at this point. This new attempt at a rose was becoming like a long red worm. So I did away with part of it. I brought in some green. I kind of wondered if a soft green base would be an answer. Maybe green and yellow. I worked on that idea for a few minutes. But no, I wasn't happy with this either. I was kind of starting to miss the worm from before. <laughs> okay, new plan. <laughs> I pulled out a micro brush. I decided to make a, a bubbly bush of greenery. You know, those bushes that, that, that are green. <laughs> That could be in a painting with roses, because, yeah, that could make sense. Well, let's make one of those, I thought. <laughs> so, off I went. I got that idea from the little stray bubbles between the roses. Now, never let it be said that when I commit to something, I don't go full out. Oh, no. This was now the plan, and I went to town a lot. I kind of love making alcohol ink bubbles, so that was certainly part of it, too. I kind of thought that the different texture of the bubbly, bushy thing could help the roses stand out. Maybe. <laughs> I decided to add tiny little bubbly things between the roses to help differentiate them there too. I filled in some areas that had lost their color. 
softened some edges at the top. And well, now we're done, right? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I'd been sick in bed for a few days. I was bored, silly. I was on a mission now. <laughs> I was still not loving this. <sighs> I'm not sure why. Too much bushiness, I think. I think it overpowered the roses. So some hedge clipping <laughs> was in order. For this, I turned the blower up to full speed. As I was doing this, I realized I really liked the rays that were forming at the bottom. So I worked to angle them in a sunburst-like pattern. I was starting to really like this. To really, really like this. Hallelujah. <laughs> If you're finding this video useful, make sure to check out my other alcohol ink videos. There's a playlist in the card at the top of the screen for you now. One drawback to using photo paper instead of a fully non-absorbent substrate like Yupo or Terra Slate is that ink can seep into the edges of the photo paper and discolor and darken, etc., your border. This can be prevented to a good degree by taping your paper down to your work surface all the way around, like making a frame with your tape, like I often do, but I'm going another route this time. Since this is eight and a half by 11 paper, I can trim this to 8x10 and still have a universal, easy-to-frame size. So that's what I'm going to do. This piece was a challenge for me, but I enjoyed it, craziness and all, because it taught me things. Tell me in the comments what you ended up thinking about this. Um, okay. Minor confession. I kind of did one more little, little thing to this off camera <laughs> after this stage. One of the things that I like about using ink on paper like substrates, like Yupo, Terra Slate, photo paper, that kind of thing, is that I can use a regular soft pink eraser to lighten areas after the fact. This doesn't work on things like tile or glass. So I lightened the lower portion a little bit more to really help the roses pop even more. And this is the final, final, for real, final piece. <laughs> I hope you love it as much as I do. Thank you to all of you contributing to my channel and using my Amazon links. Here are a couple other alcohol ink videos you might like. Thank you for hanging out with me. Let your creative nature shine. See you soon. Bye now.